Hey guys, it's Ashley here, and um, I'm finally feeling ready to share this testimony with you guys. Um, I was planning on doing it next week, but um, as I was laying down in bed last night, I felt like I was called to do it. So I went ahead and was like, okay, well, it's Saturday morning, and there's a lot going on, but we are going to do it because, well, you can't argue with that feeling that you get. So, um, I'm just going to wait just a second to see if anybody comes on here because I'm here on live. So, I want to see if anyone comes through. Give it just a second. But, uh, what I'm going to be doing today is sharing my testimony. How I went from um, a new ager, a um, witch, a neo-pagan, um, somebody who believed that all religions were the same, equal, overlapping, that they all brought you to God, to Jesus, and Jesus alone. Um, I want to share my experiences, I want to share the struggles that I've been through. The, um, I know a lot of people probably don't understand, this is a huge, like, huge transformation. If you knew me before, then you knew that I was really into, like, New Age spirituality, I was a psychic, I was a medium, um, I communicated with people that were passed on, I communicated with angels, um, I could see lots of different things, I learned lots of different things in the new age, I learned about chakras, um, energy healing, I learned about um, so many different practices that are basically rooted in you know, pagan religions and things like that. I learned so many things, but, um, you know, so if you know me, then, then this is a huge transformation. I mean, a huge transformation. Like, I was so dedicated to my path, like, and thought that I was doing the right thing. Like, I have this tattoo on my hand. Um, it, it's been a humongous shift, you know, and I wasn't, I didn't want the, like, I didn't want this shift. Like, I didn't, I wasn't seeking this, you know what I mean? Like, that's how you know, like, that God speaks and moves in your life because I would have never left my throne that I had built, that, that Satan had built for me. I would have never left that. I was happy in my own world, in my own, exploring other realms and dimensions of, of you know, I don't know, creation. Um, I never would have left that if it hadn't been for, you know, Jesus stepping in and rescuing me. So um, I guess I'll start in the beginning. So um, I've never given my testimony before, so I'm kind of excited, kind of nervous. So um, when I was young, I was um, born into a family that wasn't very, very religious. Um, we didn't really have any of that foundational teachings and things like that, which is probably why I got into this path, because I was never really told that doing these things was, you know, unbiblical or unholy or that God didn't like those things or didn't really speak about it. I didn't have that religious upbringing. But I did always have a love and a, a seeking passion for God. So I knew that. or Like, I knew I loved God. I knew that. I had a Bible early on. I was interested in going to Sunday school. I was interested in, in going when people would go. I would, I would tag along and stuff like that. I was interested in God. Um... And so I think that, that the devil used that, manipulated that, and exploited that in me. And my love for people, you know, he definitely exploited that as well. Um, my, my, just, my desire to have knowledge, to, to have, you know, other religions, to under, have understanding of other people, he exploited all of that, the seeking spirituality within me. Um, but... Anyway, so I was born into a family that didn't have a lot of, definitely no biblical upbringing or teachings, and uh, I had a lot of experiences as a child that were really difficult. I had a pretty difficult childhood. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm really willing to go into all those details, but we'll just say that there was some very, very painful and, and, you know, some dark experiences. And I think that's what led me kind of into, um, as a teenager, into really using and, and using drugs a lot and alcohol and just really numbing myself and escaping. That was my big thing. I just wanted to escape. I didn't want to be, I didn't want to feel those things that I was feeling. Um, I had so much hurt. I was so hurt. I wasn't even, I don't even know that I was angry. I was just so devastated and hurt. And so that's what really, I remember early on, like I would smoke weed a lot. I would smoke a lot of weed to just like constantly. Like I just wanted to be constantly, I mean before that there was, there was pills and um, there was, you know, just there, there was years of pills that w with an ex-boyfriend. We did that. We did oxycotton and stuff like that. You know, back 
before, when that was a, a huge thing. Laura tabs, all kinds of prescription pills, and then it turned to, to marijuana and, and drinking, and it was a constant, like, I, I didn't drink a whole lot back then, but the marijuana, like, I, I smoked all day, every single day, for years and years and years, and I didn't stop smoking marijuana until really when I got pregnant with my daughter. Um, but this, this drug use, this hole inside of me, um, there was, there was a, the drug use really, it, it led, it was a way for the enemy in, honestly, really and truly. I look back and, you know, Satan, he loves people who are, who are, have that, 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 that haze over them, that mindlessness. You're, you're trying so hard to escape and he uses that. He uses that. He likes those people who are, um dumb that are just doled out like he loves that um because that's the kind of people that he can work over and manipulate so you know i see early on how he he worked on me from you know early childhood you know i would have never i never believed in devils or satan like i believed in some spirits and demons and things like that i had no idea that the kingdom of hell the kingdom of satan was so structured alive and present in the world and like that's what this t i'm going to share some of this stuff in my testimony so if you want to hear about some stuff like that you want to see some real truth that's hidden like stick around for that because there's some some serious stuff that I would not have ever believed, but um, and I've just come to understand, see some of this stuff, and it's it's really sickening. Um, but anyway, so you know he worked on me through drugs and stuff like that for a long time. I eventually got to the point where I was using like hallucinogenic drugs, okay, and that is where. I really started doing some damage like to my mind and to my brain and stuff like that and where I really started opening myself up to like these you know spirits demons fallen angels things like that um, I would use LSD acid um, mushrooms just about anything honestly I could get my hands on like I, I had tried it I didn't really do meth or heroin or anything like that I tried both of those at one point but never never like luckily I never got into to using those really heavily um, I did have my own addictions with Subutec and alcohol pretty heavily you know years later but but this is during like you know probably 16 17 18 um, is when I really started heavily with the hallucinogenics and I had a really insane experience one time that I, I couldn't even speak afterwards I was so um, I was so shocked after after this experience, like I didn't even know what to think. So I um, had used LSD acid quite often. I got used to good trips, bad trips, like it didn't mean anything. It just, until until it just got boring and I, I was like, I can't do this anymore because it literally caused some serious like psychosis for about six months. Like my brain was just not right. My mind was, and I hit it pretty well. I didn't really tell people, <clears throat> didn't talk about it because I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy that I, you know, was, I, I thought I could have been schizophrenic. I never heard any voices or anything saying anything to me. I think it was just, I knew something was going on and I was picking up on stuff. You know, I actually was picking up on other people's thoughts and, um, mostly other people's thoughts and things like that. And so I thought I was crazy, but, um, I never heard anything like evil or wicked or anything like that at the time. You know, of course that, that stuff was all subtle. They don't, no, no wicked spirits are going to come to you as a wicked spirit, you know what I mean? They're going to they're gonna come to you disguised as angels and stuff like that. But uh, the craziest experience I had, looking back, like I didn't understand this for years and years and years. I didn't understand. This happened when I was probably 17. I didn't understand this. this is, I'm 27 now. Ten years later, I finally understand what happened here. I was sitting in this apartment. We were using LSD. I had seen a bunch of things on, on like the TV screen. Things were moving and changing. I saw... Um, this like these these Egyptian symbols and stuff like that, and I was like, oh wow, like you know, there's this something awoken in me. Oh, I'm I'm have this Egyptian ancestry or something. This it was some kind of at the time, you know, it, it was spirits. It was spirits putting that stuff on me, you know, trying to just confuse me and distort me and and tell me these things, um, implanting ideas and stuff like that. And I was picking up on other people's thoughts. At first, it was all fun. Here, go put your dress on. I put it on the door for you. It was all fun at first, you know, this was exciting, this was different, I've never experienced anything like this. I was seeking, I was um, looking for an escape, I was looking for something fun, I was looking for something different. And uh, I didn't realize at the time, like, how dangerous all this stuff really was. 
Um, I didn't realize until now how dangerous this stuff really was. Um, but I was sitting there at one point, and I remember seeing this guy was sitting across from me, and he was, like, staring into me. I didn't know what was happening, but, like, he was looking, like, deep inside of me. I was just confused, and I was scared. I was intimidated. He didn't say anything because, like, what's really going on? Like, I had no idea, but he was staring at me. And the next thing I know, there's this guy, and he's got a what? I don't even remember where this guy came from, okay? Like, so, like, people just poured in there. I don't even remember where they came from. Like, this was in, in like, the, the, the peak of this, this, this trip. I don't know where these people showed up from. There was just more people there all of a sudden. There was, like, a, a party, like, fiesta stuff going on. It was insane. And, um... So there's this guy, and he's got white, a white shirt on. His hair is like white blonde. He reminds me of like, like an angel or like a white, like a light spirit. You know what I mean? That's what he looks like. And then I see him on the ground, and he's being on the, like, he's like laying on the ground, and he's like, um, re like fighting something. It looks like something is literally. I remember thinking to myself, this looks like someone is trying to suck his soul out. And I didn't realize, like at the time, like I, I felt like a parallel to him. Like I felt. Like something, you know what I mean? Like I could, I could feel like something was happening to me. I was like, is something happening to me? Like through this guy or something? But I thought, you know, I'm tripping. I'm just crazy. Like I'm on drugs. Like, you know, nothing I say is, you know what I mean? But looking back, like I swear that that was a pivotal point where like demons were literally trying to get a hold of me and like suck my soul out. And like, you know, just use me. Like, they were marking me. They did something to me. I had no idea about that. Like I said, I just had this revelation. But, but those the years of drug use and that stuff, when you're using those drugs like that, you think you're having these mystical experiences. What's really happening is you're experiencing demons. You're experiencing fallen angels. So it says very, very blatantly and clearly in the Bible that Satan will come to, uh, to you as disguised as an angel of light. He doesn't come to you as Satan. He doesn't come to you as himself. He comes to you disguised as everything that you ever wanted, everything that you could have ever dreamed of. He comes to you disguised as God, which is exactly what he did to me. He came to me disguised as God. He exploited my love for God and used that against me to try to, you know, capture me and use me for his kingdom. And the details are, are quite gruesome, but... Um, so, you know, the drug use, drinking, fast forward a few years, I started drinking pretty heavily. Um, that became, I used, I used Subutech for a long time. I finally got clean off of Subutech after I asked God. I asked God specifically. I was struggling. I remember I was with this guy, and we ha he had a, a son. And uh, it was around the holidays, and we were just, we were struggling. You know, we were young, and they had offered, like, an, a meal or something like that through a church. They, they told us we could come pick up a meal. And, um... So we went, I went to this church to pick it up. It was, you know, I think it was like an angel tree thing and like a box Christmas dinner or something like that. So I went to pick it up and they asked me, they were like, you know, can we pray for you? And I was like, kind of caught off guard, but I was like, yeah, well, I had been struggling with addiction to study tech for about a year and a half at that point. And, um, bless you. So I was just like, yeah, you know, I have an unspoken prayer request. And uh, so two people like in me were standing here like, you know, hand in hand and they prayed for me. And I just remember crying and, you know, they, um, they prayed for me and my, in my heart, I wanted to get clean. That's what I really wanted. I wanted to get clean from that. And uh, that was, I don't know when that was, probably the beginning of December or mid-December. By Christmas time, like I was willing, I was ready to quit. I had tried to quit several, several times. I never could, never could do it. Go get you something to eat, baby. I could never quit myself. I had tried three or four times, like like seriously tried three or four times to get clean like in recent months before that, and I just couldn't do it. When I asked for that strength, when I asked God to give me that, God gave me that. God gave me that right then and there. Like Christmas Eve was the last day that I, I used Sebi Tech, and that's been probably six years now. So um, been like six or seven years, I think, clean off of that. And... Uh, I'm so grateful for that, you know, and, and I thought that that was the beginning of my, not right now, you'll have to wait and you can have some, go get some cinnamon bread or something. I thought that was the beginning, you know, of my relationship, like, with God. And so, you know, I just assumed that all the things that I were into, like, was into, was God, but, you know, it just, it wasn't, so... Um, I was into, like, around that time, I guess, a little bit after that time... I don't know exactly when it was. I had gotten into like kind of 
crystals and I had always sort of been into like new age books and astrology. Astrology was like my biggest thing. When I was probably 12 I started getting into astrology. When I was 12 I had started looking up like spells and doing stuff like that online. I thought that that was normal. I thought that that was okay. Um, I had never told, like, had anyone tell me that stuff was not okay, and I never, never assumed that that stuff came from, you know, the devil, because how could it any, you know, I always heard, like, oh, you never use, like, don't do, put a love spell on somebody, or things like that, you know, I, so I just assumed, you know, you, you know, you have to be moral about it, but no, all that power, all that manipulation is, it's ungodly, God does not want us putting our hand in things like that, he just does not want that, that he is totally against that, so, um, you know, I always had that kind of interest in that stuff, like from a very pretty young age, about 12. Uh, even using Ouija boards and stuff like that when I was pretty young, and I have some pretty, pretty horrible experiences with that, um, which I won't go into right now. But I will say don't use them, don't mess with them. Spirits will lie to you through that. Demons will come through to that. God doesn't want us talking to, to any kind of things like that. Um, go get you some food, please, right now. I'm trying to do something. Right now. Go, get your, go get your breakfast. No, nope. go get your, you're not having yogurt right now. Go get your some cinnamon bread, okay? Um, so yeah, pretty early on I had an interest in all that stuff. And then when I was about, after I got clean off of Subutech, I started drinking. I started drinking pretty heavily around that time. And it, I drank for a couple of years. Um, you know, I don't know exactly how long it was, but a few years. And then I... I worked at a bar for a while and then decided that I was going to up and run off to Florida with a friend and I was going to learn how to tattoo. So I went down to Florida for a month, learned how to, started learning how to tattoo, and then things went south there. So I came back and I, I was in Tennessee. I was around, I was smoking weed, and one day I was like, you know, I got to go find a job. I got to go see if I can find somewhere that will let me tattoo. Go put your clothes on. Go put your clothes on. Okay. And uh, so I finally found a place, and I started tattooing. And no, go put your clothes on. Go put your clothes on. Go put some clothes on. And uh, so I started. Um, I started tattooing, and I was, you know, just I felt so good. I felt so happy. Like I felt like, wow, you know, my life is really, really coming together. Like everything was working out for me. Like I felt so good. Um, I felt just really content and just happy and. Go get you something to eat real quick and put on some pants. I like crinkles. And, um, like so around that time, like, every, like I said, everything I was so good. I just spent most of my time, like, drawing. I mean, I, I, for a long time, like, during my apprenticeship, like, I just spent time drawing. I was just drawing all the time and smoking weed. It was just smoking weed and drawing. And, like, I was just, you know living inside of this this world all of my own sorry guys um yeah so i mean i was just just high as a kite like that's all i cared about really was just smoking weed and drawing and becoming a tattoo artist and all of that and uh you know it wasn't long after i settled into that that routine and that lifestyle that I started really exploring some things like things just started really coming into my life and I really thought this was God so I started having some experiences I started feeling really good um, started reading I started um, I finally felt rooted I finally felt settled enough like I had moved in with the with the guy that I was with at the time and like things were just going really well like I felt like wow you know my life is really just starting to like root and I felt stable I hadn't felt stable in a long time um, I hadn't felt comfortable or stable and, and or, or had that room to really like spread my roots and just really like you know start exploring life and things like that so you know I started doing that I started really coming into myself I was making jewelry I was creating art I was doing these things I was exploring subjects that were you know seemed important to me like religion spirituality um, self-help trying to to gain a better understanding of who I am and the world around me I, I had a, a desire to explore the supernatural that was a, a my it's always been one of the, the biggest things like that that drew me in and one of the biggest ways that Satan you know manipulated me so um, it started about um, I don't remember the year it was around 2014 or 2015 I started um, I was there and I started I was smoking weed all the time 
and I started getting really into like just like Celtic music and like instrumental Celtic music and I would sit outside and I would just be super baked like smoking marijuana constantly and uh, listening to this music and like this music was just like enchanting and entrancing and it reminded me of like just fairies and you know all that like Celtic Irish lore and stuff like that so that's kind of where like this really like began I started inviting fairy spirits around but not just inviting these spirits around like I saw them I started seeing like fairies little things in the garden like I would see these like little spirits like twinkling around and I was like wow you know that's really cool and so that's when I started seeing like fairies and uh, once I started seeing them, like, they started, like, interacting with me and stuff like that. Other people couldn't really see these. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm special. Like, I've been working on my chakras. I've been doing all these things. Like, I've opened my third eye. Um, I can see these spirits now. These spirits are, are blessing me, you know. And so that's what I thought. I thought these spirits were blessing me. And so these, these fairies... Um, I keep doing that because these fairies are demons. Like they're literally demons. They're fallen angels. They're they're just take they take on whatever form they can that will get you to listen and talk to them. That's why they come disguised as Jesus. They come disguised as angels, as fairies, whatever it is that'll make you watch and li look and listen to them. They'll take that. They'll take on that form. So, um, that's how they got to me. It was through the fairy stuff. I was interested. It was a new subject. I was just exploring it and you know I was like wow this is so cool so I remember vividly sitting outside one day and I was like looking for these fairies and stuff and I remember seeing like this it was like a silhouette of a man in the woods like I didn't see this like with my, my physical eyes I saw this like with my third eye and um, I was like you know I, I, I didn't really notice it at first but it spoke to me it was like it asked me, like, and this is where I opened the door to something really, really dark. This is where I opened the door to Satan on accident. It asked me, it said, can I follow you? And it was like, the way it looked like was like, it, it came to me like it was this lost spirit, this lost spirit. And I was like, well, yeah, you can follow me and Jesus. Like, because I was like, well, I don't know who you are. Like, you can follow me and Jesus. Like, you know, so I always had a heart for Jesus. I was always open. I always knew Mommy. that Jesus was... Don't put... You don't need shoes on right now. But it looks cute. I don't um, shoes. So that's where I actually opened the door to something. Um, some kind of really big demon. Um, probably, like, a, looking back, like, and after the experiences I've had, probably the God... The God pan. Because um, I had some some pretty dark experiences with this demon and I'll, I'll share that with you guys but um, that's where it opened the door I think and then I started inviting fairies into the house um, because I thought you know these are fairies they're like animals they're like little like little you know what I mean I guess I just had this like snow white kinda like you know all these little animals and fairies like are gonna be all around my feet and they're just you know obviously they're not gonna clean my house but like I don't know honestly I thought like I guess I thought they would like spiritually like brighten the place up and just do things like I was so wrong I was so wrong I remember getting agitated at first like with them and then I felt really bad I was like because they kept like things kept disappearing and moving and, and, and stuff like that and I was like I got agitated and, and I was kind of rude and I was like yeah, you know I was like I don't appreciate this I was like you know if this is how you're gonna be like get out like I don't want you here you know and then I felt guilty about it so um, I mean, this probably sounds insane, guys, but, but these are real experiences. Like, this is not just, like, like, this was real stuff. Like, if it hadn't been real, then, um, you know, obviously, like, no one would, would go with that, you know. But, you know, I had that experience. Daddy, Those things started coming in. And then, um, I'm trying to do something. And then I had this experience. I started meeting groups and friends and people on, on Facebook. Okay, I'm doing something right now. So I started, you know, connecting with other people who were also into the same spirituality as me. And then um, angels, angels started visiting me. So, um, and goddesses. So I got connected with this girl who, who told me she wanted to do an activation. Um, some kind of activation. It was going to activate some kind of, you know, ancient powers in me. And so I did this thing, and I, I was just like, I lit some candles, and I laid in bed, and I got, like, dressed in, like, some really pretty, like, you know... Um, robes and stuff like that 
and basically meditated. And, you know, whenever she came out of this, whenever we came out of this meditation, she gave me this list of things, like, that she said that she heard and that she saw. And, like, these were real things. Like, she really spoke to something inside of me. She was, like, you know, telling me things, like, that were so true about me, you know. So, like, you believe it. You believe these are great things. Like, this is true. I finally found God, you know. And then I started having the angels come to me. So, um, you need to go play for a little bit, and then you can use my phone when I'm done, okay, if you listen. And, uh, then eat, take your food if you're hungry. You can have some cinnamon bread, go get the milk, and I'll make you a cup of milk. I'm doing something right this minute. But, um, so then the angels started coming, okay? So I felt this was, well then go sit down. Get your chair and you can sit too. I can't see if you're sitting on top of me all the time. Um, the angels started coming to me. I started learning about archangels and angels, you know, and now looking back on this, like, God, now since I've come out of all this, and, like, I've experienced, like, Jesus and, like, the Holy Spirit and God, I will say God never sends angels by, like, by name. Like, he ne I've never sensed, like, I've never seen or heard the name of any angel that has come to me. I've never had, I've had maybe one or two angels, like, bring a message, but it's never like with like what these archangels, these archangels are literally like large demons and um, they just disguise themselves. Like they're very, they're very good. They have high thrones. Like God doesn't do that. God doesn't name angels and give them thrones on, on earth. The only angel that we know of with a throne is Archangel Michael. And, um, you know, even he is said that to defeat Satan and, uh, you know, that's the only angel that we hear about. Nobody else is, is named, and even he is not put before Jesus, you know what I mean? So I had these experiences, these archangels coming to me, these demons, this fallen angels is what they are. When, because when Satan was kicked out of heaven, a third of God's angels went with him. And so um, those angels that went with him are, are here, are here on earth, and they're working in building up this, this army. Which is why Satan works so hard to indoctrinate people and keep them, because he needs an army. Because when he left heaven, when God kicked them, Satan out and these angels went, they can't get back into heaven. So now they have to fight for a place here on earth, a place in the kingdom here. Um, but anyway, so I first, I experienced like Archangel Michael um, was, was the, a big one. He's a protector angel, supposedly. Um, and Archangel Haniel, I remember I was laying in bed one, one morning, not feeling well. I think I was experiencing some kind of sickness or something like that. And, uh, or maybe just some discomfort. I don't know what it was, but this angel came to me and said, my name's, I was like half asleep. And it was like, my name is Archangel Haniel, like Daniel, like Ar Archangel Haniel, like Daniel. Um, but Haniel, and it said that like specifically, and I was like, wow, okay. So I, I started looking up, and this was supposedly like a very like, um, and like just a soft, very feminine angel or whatever that helps with intuition and, and stuff like that. And so like these things are real, people. Like you can exploit these gifts. Like you can tune your chakras. You can become a psychic and a medium. You can, but it's not by God's will. And so. The, when you're doing that, when you're calling on these angels, when they're helping you strengthen these gifts, they're exploiting what God has given us for Him to use. And they're also opening these doorways, not just for you. Like, they're not opening these doorways for you to learn how to, to be a better psychic. They're opening these doorways because they know if they show you these things, eventually they'll have control over those places inside of you like they did me which is some other gruesome details like I can get get into with you but um, so they started coming angels but you know here's the thing when I first started getting into this like witchcraft and stuff like that you know I thought and I started experiencing angels okay Archangel Michael being the first angel that I started learning about this is mentioned in Revelations Archangel Michael so of course these things seem godly right that's how they get you, in, like, ensnared in this. Satan's good, okay? He's the, the original deceiver. Like, he is good at what he does. He's good at tricking people, and he tricked me. And, um, so, in the beginning of all this, I started doing witchcraft and stuff like that, and things started, like, teachings starting to, started to come to me. These angels were teaching me things. 
And, you know, one of the first things that they taught me was how to fight off demons. So I was like, okay, well, this is definitely a good spirit, right? If they're teaching me how to fight off demons. But they were teaching me how to shield myself, how to protect myself. But you know what they were really doing? They were teaching me how to wear myself down by running in circles, fighting after, fighting these demons. Since I've found God, since I've found Jesus, and I've listened and read in the Word what it says about fighting demons, we don't even have to fight these things. God is so powerful, we don't have to fight demons. Literally all we have to do is ask God to come quickly to fight these things, and He will allow us to rest under His wing. We might experience some difficulties when we deal with or see these spirits around us, like we might feel uncomfortable, but eventually they're gone. Eventually God wins out. And like, we don't even have to fight. All we have to do, God gives us in Ephesians chapter 6 in the Bible, it talks about the full armor of God. It's Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, I believe, talks about the full armor of God. And if you dress yourself in this full armor of God, the enemy cannot penetrate into, into your being at all. He even, he even gives us the helmet of salvation, he calls it, which allows us to protect our minds from manipulations, from the... the you know, snares, the whatever, the the slurs of the devil. Like we don't even, yeah, we don't even have to fight. So that's a huge thing, right? So when when Satan teaches you how to fight demons, what he teaches you is how to shield yourself, how to protect yourself, and how to run yourself exhausted, so that way you can't fight when it's really time for those demons to try and get a hold of you. What God says is, don't fight. I don't want you to ruin your robes. Like I don't want you to dirty your clean robes with blood of your enemy, like I'm not gonna make you fight. You rest under my wing and I fight. You're not the fighter, you're not the warrior, you're just the praiser, you just praise me. And you, I fight them. So that's a huge difference. If you're, if you're a spiritual new age believer and you think that you have to fight demons, then you are working for Satan. You are being misled, you are being deceived by Satan because God will not have you fight. He will have you pray, he will have you praise, but he will not have you fight. And so, you know, looking back, that, that, that was a telltale sign. And obviously then I thought, oh, these demons are teaching me, or these angels are teaching me how to fight off demons, so they must be good, right? So, um, you know, I practiced for many, many years. And in the time, you know, from then until basically, you know, like right up till recently, I had gotten pretty good at my psychic gifts. I had gotten pretty good at readings. I, had run, I was running a business. I could write... Um, I mean, I could do readings for people. People would come to me. I would help them with their spiritual problems. Um, you know, I could do readings for them. I could reach out to people from beyond the grave. I could see things, like, in my mind. If I got in there, um, they taught me how to work on my chakras, which <laughs> is... I don't even know what to think about that, honestly, because, you know... They tell you that, oh, you need to open your third eye. You need to open your third eye. God doesn't need you to open your third eye. If you look back into the beginning in Genesis, when Adam and Eve are in the garden, God comes to Adam and Eve, and they see him exactly as he is. I mean, well, not exactly. I don't know. It doesn't say that specifically. But what it does say is that Adam, like, he called Adam and Eve by name. That's why Adam went running, because he heard God's voice. And he was like, oh, I'm naked, you know, I have to hide. I don't want you to see me naked. He heard them and saw them. He does, you don't have to work on your third eye or open your chakras to, get, to be able to, to receive messages from God. Like, you don't have to do that. You just have to be devoted and to be, you know, in favor of God and to be connected with God. So, you know, that's a, a lie. From the very beginning, you don't have to, to know that. You don't have to do that to get, to get messages from God. And even, not just Adam and Eve, you know, some people might say, well, that was before, you know, whatever. Well, I mean, it wasn't before, because after Adam, Adam sinned, he was already had sinned whenever they saw God. But also, the descendants of, of you know, I guess Adam, Adam's descendants, they still saw him. The, the descendants of Abraham, they saw God, they heard God many times. Like, they saw angels, and, and those angels came to them, real angels sent from God. Um, they saw them, and they didn't, because, I mean, there's many times I've read in Genesis where, where an angel comes or God comes and is like, you know, call, calls them by name, Abraham, and, and they're like, here I am. They hear God, they see God. They don't need, you don't need to open your third eye to, to do that. If you think that you have to open your third eye to see God, then you are so wrong. If you're opening your third eye to see something else, it ain't mm -hmm. to see God. I um, 
And so that's, you know, that's the thing, is they have you working on these chakras, opening up these places inside of you, working on your energy bodies. And what it does, yeah, there is some, some things that, that it does. There is some things that I, that I saw and was able to do because of that. Um, there's places I was able to go and access and travel through the, those areas and stuff like that. But, you know, mostly it becomes a prison. It becomes a prison trying to maintain those chakras because once you start feeling those things, you can feel them all the time. And it's like a machine. You're always fine-tuning it like a, you know, like a tattoo machine or, um, you know, I, I say like a car, but it's, it's not like a car is pretty <laughs> stable. Your chakra system is not. It doesn't take much to throw it off. And so you may be constantly, constantly, like, if you're like me, I was super anal and super, um, what's the word, you know, just finicky. I, I was always trying to, like, you know, have my chakras all right and in balance and order and, and, and all that. So it becomes a prison. You know, after, after I've come out of that, after I've come on the other side of that and I've stopped tuning my chakras, I have so much peace. I don't focus on all that stuff that's going on inside of me. And God doesn't make me do that. You know, sometimes I'll start to feel a little bit, you know, whatever. Like, I'll start to feel a little bit just agitated. Like, I, you know, maybe when I used to think I needed to be cleansed or something like that. And when I do feel like that, instead of doing it myself, I ask God to do that. Because what I did when I was tuning these chakras, I wasn't just tuning them. I was opening them up. They became portals for demonic activity. They became, you know, and, and I say that, guys. You think, you know, when you're possessed by something that you are going to act like a crazy ravenous fool, that you're going to act this or that. You don't. You wouldn't believe the amount of demons that poured out of me and my house and even out of my child. Like, it's sad and it's my biggest, you know, regret, but it's real. The amount of demons that I saw pouring out of things in my house, they came out like rushing water. Like, when you turn on the bathtub and you see a, 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 a just the, the water coming down like a, or like a waterfall, how it's just a solid, thick... That's what the demons came out as, like, and then it took a long, I don't want that, I don't want that on here either, it took a long time, I mean, it took several weeks, and probably still fighting things, like, God's probably still fighting things off, you know, a month later, you know, still trying to clear this stuff out, it's mm -hmm. real, guys, like, it's real, it ain't, and you can walk around without even knowing that you're under this influence and this spell, um, no, I don't, so basically, you know, I started going to, I was always open to church, I was always open to Jesus, because the, what the devil had me believe in was that all religions were valuable, all of them have something to teach, and I hear this now, I hear other people sharing their testimonies, this is a lot, I mean, the, you know, I hate to say that, because I never wanted to be somebody who was like divisive or unkind to other people and their beliefs, you know, especially those who are innocent in their beliefs and thinking, you know, like me, who were deceived, but <clears throat> the truth is, those religions aren't, like, they're, they're demon doctrines, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen it, I've watched it. There's a, a video on YouTube called Gods of the New Age, a documentary. It shows where these people um, just go under the influence of these gurus and expose themselves, open these up to, the, to these Hindu gods and other gods and stuff like that. These are just serpents, they're just demons. Like, they're not, they're, they're big and they're powerful and they show you things and things happen but when you look at it from the other side once you've come onto the other side of it like you see things that are just not it's disgusting it's disgusting it's rape it's it's truly rape it's vile and uh you know like i said i started going to church in i started going to a ministry in august and by october like, I started going regularly because I just really loved it. I really enjoyed it. I felt like these people loved God like I loved God, you know. And so so I, I started going, and, you know, I can't remember. One day they asked for if anyone needed prayer, and I was like, you know, I don't know why. I was like, but I'm just, I just want to be like those women up there that are praying, and, like, I just want to be like them. And so I went up there, and, like, I just asked them for prayer, and they started praying for me, and, like, I just started crying. I just started crying. I hadn't, I don't know, I didn't even, even then I didn't feel anything. I didn't know what was, I didn't feel anything. Um, but that's when God really got a hold of me, when he really started breaking through. And this is when it got serious, okay? So, you know, when I, before this time, like these angels that I had, these like fallen angels, these demons, you know, Satan was, Satan was good to me. I, I hate to say that because that makes me sound bad, but, but that's, that's how he gets good people is he be, he treats them well. Okay. Like he tried to be God to me. He tried to be a father to me. And it, that's what's most sickening about it. 
You know what I mean? You can't play God. You can't take God's children and be their father. Like, you can't do that. And that's why it was so easy to leave. People ask me, well, how, how could you make such a huge switch? Because when your whole foundation is built on lies and deception and, and, and rape, like, how, how could you not leave? You know what I mean? But uh, it, it got... He was. He tried to be good to me. He really did, and that's that's what's most sickening about it. Looking back, it, it is sick. He tried to, to to be really to be God. He tried to surround me with with the best angels, with the best fallen angels that he could. You know what I mean? He didn't he didn't send vile, nasty demons to to be around me. How could I believe he was God if he did that? So he he sent me the best of what he could, and. Uh, you know, I had been seeing, like, visions in my mind for a while. I kept seeing, like, a pentacle, like an upside-down pentagram and, like, this weird horned demon thing. And every time I would see it, like, I would be like, oh, that's disgusting. You know, why am I seeing that? I didn't realize it. Well, my friend next door was like, I had been praying for you for months and months and months, like, that God would just break through and show you the truth, like, show you what was really going on here. And so those prayers were coming through to me, and I was seeing glimpses of it. Like, somehow these glimpses were penetrating through this spell that I was under, this enchantment that I was under. And, uh, you know, it was, it was coming through, but it, it didn't work. Really. It didn't work until I, until I got in there and was willing to put myself up there and say, hey, I need prayer. You know, once I did that, you know, I had lots of people praying over me. There was three one time, and then actually there was four one time, and me praying at the same time. And then another time there was like, you know, four of us praying together. And that's when God really started coming through. But when that happened, when God started really trying to get a hold of me, that's when Satan really upped his game. Okay, because this is when it started getting really like, and this is where the deception and, and the disgust and like just the vileness, you know, comes in. So, you know... Satan tries to throw everything he has at me. He's like trying to trying to build me up. Okay, I'm not thinking anything about it. I'm thinking, okay, now I've gone, I've gone to ask for prayer, and now I'm being blessed. You know, I'm being blessed now because because I went up there and like I, I'm devoted and I'm wanting to serve and do all these things. Like now I'm being blessed. So um, he starts throwing things at me in my spiritual in my spiritual journey. You know, he starts building me up. Okay, like giving me more. My gifts are are expanding. Um, things are coming to me, visions, I'm having visions, okay, and, and this is really oh, sad, and it's really, it was dragonflies, mm -hmm, those are butterflies, I think, baby, this is, this is a really, it's a painful thing to discuss and share, but this is important, because if you experience something like this in the new age, or if you're having these experiences, or you've had these experiences, you need to know, and you need to see this, and if you haven't, then you need to know and see this, so you can get out, because it's a lie, it's a deception, so uh, I started, in the, in the New Age, in the spiritual community, there's, there's this thing called twin flames, okay? We've all heard of soulmates and things like that, right? So, um, basically, this twin flame, this soulmate, they're not always with you in, in this lifetime, right? So, sometimes, like, you will, they, they tell you that your, your twin flame or your soulmate will incarnate together. You'll have lives together because there's, there's many lifetimes is the way that these, you know, these demons, you know, feed you or whatever. And so... It's because you know, because I, I I thought that oh, because I'm you know expanding in my gifts and my understanding of God, like I'm being blessed right now. Well, you're not supposed to be having more chocolate anyway, so stop. I thought I'm being blessed, you know, and, and things are opening to me. So I started getting these visions of a. I started it started with a dream. Mama left that one. No, this is mine. Sorry. Um, I had this dream, okay, that this God of the wild, this God Pan, had come to me. And came to me like as this twin flame, as this twin soul. Stop, stop, go play. And uh, I'm trying to share something very important right now. Um, and so I was like so humbled, right? Oh my gosh, this Greek God, like he's a lesser God or whatever. I was like, but you know, he loves me and like we're soulmates. I know this probably sounds so insane, like, but you know, that's the level of deception like that, that these spirits can work on you. Um, they can put in whatever they want. Like they can make you think whatever that they want to. These angels, these fa they're fallen angels. They're demons. Like they don't care about you. You're just a pawn to them. And so um, this is what they had me believing that you know, this was my soulmate, and that we were working through some karma. Um, basically, you know, there was an astrological portal that had opened up and aligned for us to to basically work through some things and to decide whether we were going to. Um, 
be together in our next lifetime or if we were going to be together on a soul level like are, are our souls going to become in union with one another or are we just going to leave our relationship in the past because we had had some serious you know disagreements and stuff like that i mean li like listen to this this is it's so well thought out it's so detailed like how could you not believe it you know what i mean i know it sounds crazy but when you're living in this world of spirits of the soul like when you're living it throughout these other dimensions of understanding in life like that's not unheard of it's not uncommon and that's what why it's so dangerous because you're they, they want you to live inside of this fantasy world that they've you know crafted and, and created for you so that you're not present so that you're not you know really truly grounded in the world and not in the world but in the word and in jesus and in, in the church and just really in seeing the truth they just they just wrap you up it, it was complete bondage so um so i see this and we have these I, I had this dream and this has become like an experience for me i'm like wow what a blessing you know like i'm, I'm experiencing this really awesome um you know spiritual divine blessing and so um we are thank you i had the dream and then you know every couple of days you know i would do we, i would do a meditation i would try to connect and just see where things were going like in in this connection i was like i know this can't last forever because you know we're not in the same place like so this isn't going to be like a forever thing so i was like you know we'll, we'll just have this connection we'll med meditate on it we'll meet in meditation and in, in dreams and stuff and then like eventually like we'll have to go our separate ways so you know the way that it was presented was like it was just a passing meditate. portal thing like eventually it was going to like you know we were going to come to part and of course that that's so convenient for satan right that way he doesn't have to hold up this facade for long like it's just like oh i'm just gonna come it's, it's only a brief moment that i get to see you and, and all that you know i had visions a vision one time of um us having met in meditation somewhere and we were on clouds and we were there to get like we were together and then as we started we started drifting apart from one another on these clouds and then he like j he he stood from his cloud and reached up to mine and like kissed me and it was just like oh my gosh you know it, it's just the level of deception guys if you're not in the new age if you're not into spirituality then these things might sound you know kind of crazy but um if you're in that and if you've experienced that level of you know meditation and you know, spiritual exploration then, then you can understand understand that but so that that's where it began with this coming to an end when i when i started coming to god you know satan really started ramping it up and giving it everything he had you know he's got to throw it full force just to try and keep me right and so he tries to give me that oh he knows he plays on the fact that i'm lonely have you know had a relationship in, in many years and you know i don't care like he, he's played on that he's used that oh she's lonely so like let's let's work on her like that and um just total disregard total disregard for me it doesn't care he's just trying to keep me where where he wants me just to, to be disposed of you know when it's all said and done and so that was the beginning and then um you know after this not long after this like the the vision the facade the enchantment the spell it all started to kind of fade away because the, they put their hands on me and they were praying for me and they had their hands on my head and were praying and you know god god stepped in jesus stepped in you know i had a vision not long before where jesus literally walked me like had my had my soul in his arms and walked me up from the underworld um you know, uh, which I'll get more into that here in just a second. That has something that has to do with chakras and stuff. But um, so the facade started to fall away. This enchantment started to fall away, and I was left with true visions of what this demon Pan really was. Okay, so he came disguised as this beautiful, enchanting, like the beautiful Greek statues, like beautiful marbled face, and just like you know, just this beautiful physique and stuff like that um but his true form was disgusting he was like a snake and a goat and like had these horns and he was hideous his eyes were like like goat eyes and like were like clouded um hair all over him disgusting claw like long fingers claws and like hooves and just hair everywhere just nasty not just like but like fur but like nasty vile just like stringy hair i know this sounds horrible that's what he looked like god showed me his true form what's most sickening is 
like I saw a vision of him trying to like crawl onto my daughter, my child, my in like infant. Like she's like four, you know what I mean? And so that was like a huge like red flag and awakening. It was like God showing me like, you know, this thing's trying to get to your child too. Like not just you, like he wants your child. And I'm thinking, what kind of, you know, soulmate is going to like go after a child? Like that's the word, like Satan knows that the one thing I hate most in this world is people who would abuse children. And so of course now, now you can see his true nature. So he's, lied to me, he's deceived me, he's built me up on a throne for many years, built me up, built me up, built me up, and, and, and tried to father me in ways, but as soon as, like, God steps in, and as soon as Jesus stepped in, he didn't care about me, he showed how much he cared about me, he tried to go, he, he deceived me, he lied, he put on a huge production, lied to me, deceived me, and then went after my child, um, disgusting absolutely disgusting so that's that's what these gods are you know um many years like i had my dream was to be like an olympian you know i didn't tell people about this stuff because this was personal this was spiritual you know i thought oh i want to be like a god i want to be like an olympian i thought olympians i thought gods were god's helpers you know what i mean like i thought oh, okay like we're just helping god like here on earth like we're we're chosen people like we're helping god no, that ain't what these gods on earth are. That's not who they are. They don't want to, they don't want to help God. They want to take, they want to be God. They don't want to, they don't, they're not helping God. They are the opposite of that. They're not, the kingdom of hell is real on earth. And uh, just leave it. Well, just leave it. The, the kingdom of hell is real. It's layered, it's tiered, it's hierarchical, it's chaotic. There's no... It's everyone out for themselves. It's real, guys. It's real. Like, these demons do not care. They don't care because they, they don't get to rest. The only way that they get anywhere is to do more and more evil, to reap more souls. You know, I had a, like I said, I had wanted to be an Olympian. I got there. I got there right before this all happened. That, that was another way that Satan tried to keep me. He tried to show me, look, like, you're an Olympian now. You're at, you're, you're at, you're at the bottom, but you're an Olympian. You're on Mount Olympus with us. With, with your with your soulmate and uh, I wanted to be I, I thought one of the most honorable things to be after I passed would be to be like a reaper like to be some, not a reaper you know what I mean yes I guess so somebody that came to deliver people from one from earth you know to heaven that's what I wanted to do like in my in the most sacred way I thought how wonderful would it be to usher people from one side from earth to heaven you know I thought that would be the best thing in the whole world. <laughs> You know, looking back now, like, Satan used me to do that for him. He had me reaping souls from God's people, bringing them to him. I wanted to do that for God. I wanted to be an angel that brought people to God. And instead, he turned me into a demon reaper that took God's people and brought them to him. By help, having me share false doctrines, by having me write books, by having me... Just so overzealous and passionate, thinking, oh, I've got to share these things. I've got to share that. Just like with, with Jesus, we've got to share the gospel. I had to share the false gospel. You know, um, the level of deception is astounding. Like you, I mean, it's like bravo. The level of deceit, the level of deception, it's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. And it started with him working inside me, like working in my chakras, you know. That's that's a big thing I wanted to share. I'm, I kind of circle back to that because the chakras. He changes those chakras, so our chakras are for God to work on, and, and and I don't even understand the full extent of what God wants to use those for, or how God uses those. But I can tell you exactly what Satan does to them. Satan will have you open all those things to him and his fallen angels, and then he'll manipulate those things. Not long ago, I actually was in, uh, well, right, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll share this, this one first. Before I, right before I got out of this, right before God stepped in and pulled me out, I was in meditation, and when you come out from there, before you knock the tree over, it's shaking and it's going to fall. Um, I was in meditation, and I remember these I didn't, I didn't know it, I didn't know at the time that there was like two angels on, on, two angels on both sides of me, 
that, that were helping me. And they were going over my chakras. I was meditating on, on clearing my chakras because, you know, it's just a way to keep me distracted, keep me focused on, on, on anything else. Like, that's what well, I mean, he does. Like, he will just have you busy, 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 so you don't have time to question things, you know. Um, but, yeah, so I, I uh, was meditating on my chakras, and there's a crown chakra. Like, there's a crown chakra on the head, and... Um, the angels, these angels, these demons that were with me were like, why does hers look different? I didn't think anything about it. All I heard was, why does hers look different than ours? I didn't think anything about it. Whatever. Like, I just, I had no idea. But this was after I had been prayed over. This is after I had been going, you know, heavily being prayed over and stuff like that. And, uh, so I, I didn't think anything about it, but... Um, then I had another experience. So, so basically what I'm, what I'm getting at is that Satan changed my chakra. He changed my crown chakra to be what he wanted it to be. He broke it. He broke my crown chakra and made it what he wanted it. Not just me, but he did it to those other, you know, spirits too that were helping me. That's how he was manipulating our understanding. He changed it. He altered it. You know, I also, God told me, I was in, um, the shower, broken down, just needing God's healing, needing God's healing. I was just, you know, in shambles and stuff after all this. There's, there's a lot that goes into coming out of something like this, you know, and like you get broken down. It's not easy to come out of, a, of lies, of years and years and years of lies. But, um, can you please stop? Go play. He had told me, God had told me, or an angel had told me, because I was in utter distress. Like, he was like, when I was crying and crying, he was like, he was like, Satan cut into your solar plexus. Like, he cut into your solar plexus. He cut you in that place where, you know, is a place that's supposed to be associated with intelligence and understanding and uh, personal power, personal identity. He cut right into that, right? So, you know, he destroyed, tried to hurt who I was. Quit, please. You pushed me. <laughs> well, honey, I'm trying to do something. And so... That's another thing. That, how telling is that? Like, he literally cut into, like, my personal identity and changed who I was. And I remember, like, thinking back when, when I heard that, I remember the exact time when that happened. Because there was a time where I was sitting there, and, like, nothing in my life, like, w like was satisfying to me anymore. I felt like there was this rock on side, inside of me. I felt like there was this rock in me. Like, I felt like there was a stone inside my solar plexus chakra. I just remember feeling like like I couldn't really move or eat. I felt really, really weird. And uh, so like looking back after God told me Satan cut into your solar plexus chakra, I remembered the time where my solar plexus chakra felt like totally, can't even explain it, never had anything like that happen in, since or before. And uh, when that happened in my life, like, I remember, like, nothing was satisfying. Like, nothing I had been doing was working for me. That's when I decided I was going to leave my job. I was going to leave the guy that I was with, the guy that was actually trying to, tell, like, to help me and tell me to, you know, not to, to be messing around with that stuff, but to turn to Jesus. Stop. Stop. Give me just a minute. And, um... He, uh, and, and, and go, like, to decide to, to, to leave him, to quit my job, and to become a spiritual healer. That was what, what he gave me. So he cut into me and put in what he wanted. No more. It wasn't my ideas anymore, but I didn't know that. I decided that's when I was going to become a psychic, a medium, a healer, and I was going to dedicate my life to sharing that gospel, to sharing that doctrine, and that's what I did. And that's when it all really, really, you know, started rooting. I left that guy. Um, met my daughter's father not long after that. Had my daughter moved. And, you know, was, have been doing this, you know, ever since. And everything probably would have stayed this way. Except when... No, give me a minute, please. No. No, stop climbing all over me, please. Uh, everything would have probably stayed this way. You know, if it had been up to me, but you know what? What happened was I actually met somebody who was struggling, and had told me that she had, you know, in her younger days made a pact with Satan, and that she had sold her soul and made a blood pact with Satan. 
And of course, I was like, wow, well, I've got some experiences with demons. Like, I understand some of this stuff. Like, I was told how to fight demons and stuff. This is before I was saved. This is actually what led me to being saved. Um, I stepped in. I stepped in. I was like, well, we got to get you to church. Like, we got to get you, you know, in, in connection with God. Like, we got to get this taken care of. Like, I'll do anything I can for you. I'll help you in any way I can. And so I, I started helping her. And because I started helping her try to get away from these demons it really agitated those fallen angels and the demons and Satan who I didn't really know at the time had a hold on me but did so basically I had this dream one time where like all these like it was basically I had a dream where a plot was exposed that God was gonna step in and do something big and I was like oh that's awesome and then all these spirits around me all these demons were like no that's not awesome and I was so confused about that I didn't understand that because to me like I'm like yeah you know we need God we need God and all these demons are like why do we need God like we don't you know what I mean like we don't believe in or we don't you know support God or whatever we're not yeah and I was like well uh, you know I do I thought that too, <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought that these angels, I thought this new age stuff, I thought it was all sent by God, but it's not. It wasn't. And it took me stepping into the line of fire to, to understand that. And then it took Jesus seeing that sacrifice and my willingness to step in. And I think, you know, my confusion, no, um, about that. Like, I didn't know that I wasn't working for God. I thought that's what I was doing this whole time, you know? And so, uh, he stepped in, like, Jesus stepped in, no, because you're not listening, Jesus stepped in then when I was trying to save her, or trying to help bring her to salvation, or bring her to Jesus, you know, and, you know, that's, that's really when all this, you know, started, started going, when I started really, when Satan started really ramping things up, but once he, once he realized that Jesus had a hold of me, he went completely 180, completely relentless. I'm not kidding you. He had, there was demons pouring into my house every, at every, um, through every book, through every pentacle, through my tapestry. I'm not kidding. I was laying on my bed and I just felt like there was a tapestry on my wall right beside me. I can't explain to you. I just felt like this surge of energy and this fear and this panic was over me. That's because these demons were literally flying out of these portals from everywhere that they could in my house. I couldn't sleep that night. I usually go to bed around 8, 9, 10, depending, like maybe 11. I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning because I was feeling all this stuff going on, this spiritual warfare. I was seeing visions of it. I was seeing angels and demons fighting in heaven. Like It was just like an ocean full of like angels and demons fighting. Like That was it. That's it. Like That was all that I could see. And... Uh, you know, it, it was exposed, like, just in, in that, that short time, like, I, I had no idea, I had no idea how, how bound I was, um, in all of that, um, another thing I wanted to mention really quick, because it's, it goes along with these chakras, so, you know, Satan had also taught me about other chakras, like, beneath our feet and stuff like that, I don't know if that's real, or if that was just his way of trying to get me down, but, uh, he had taught me about these chakras that are beneath the feet that connect us to the earth, but really um, they connect us to the underworld or it, you know, going down there, going down through that path that he showed me takes you to the underworld. So he had me actually convinced that I could go into the underworld and uh, just explore there and learn stuff there that would help me. So basically, he called me down there and trapped me down there. Um, and it's kind of crazy. It reminds me of like that movie Hercules, where Hercules, like the cartoon one, where where there's all those souls swimming in, in the underworld, and he goes in after that, after Meg, and he comes out and he's, you know, almost dead himself, but he's got Meg like carrying her like that. Like that's what it looked like when Jesus came after me. Like that's the exact vision I saw, except Jesus didn't look like Hercules looked where he was all like almost lifeless and stuff. He just didn't look like that at all. Like he looked exactly like Jesus. And he was carrying my soul. He came down to the underworld where Satan called me down and had me trapped down there. And he picked me up and brought me up and rescued my soul and pulled off all the binds, told me 
this is the truth of what you're experiencing. This is what's happening to you. This is what's really going on. You were deceived. And don't be surprised. Like, this is the, the earth. Like, Satan has been deceiving since day one. If you go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. It's literally chapter three, I think. Like, literally as soon as everything is built and, and humans are placed into the garden, Satan comes deceiving and lying. And he has been doing it. You know, we, we think... Satan has us so convinced that the Bible is just bland, it's boring, it means nothing. That Jesus is just another teacher, that they're all the same. And uh, tries to do everything to keep us from Jesus and from the Bible. But uh, it says, you know, in the beginning, like, he did, like, and he didn't just stop there. He deceived us in the beginning, but God says, because you've done this, you and the offspring of this woman will be at each other's heel and head for eternity. It's a never-ending cycle. You're always going to be striving to do harm to these people, and they're always going to be falling because of you. Like, that's what, what God said when, when, when Satan, after Satan, he realized what Satan had done to deceive. Um, there's always going to be a cycle. You're always going to, to try and, like, to deceive them and they're always going to fall because of you and that's the cycle that you've Mom, created can you share so we don't it didn't just happen in the beginning okay Satan didn't just deceive Eve and that's it mm -hmm. Satan deceived Eve and because of that deception it started a cycle with every single person that's ever been born on the earth okay and the only way out of that is through Jesus I mean it's really interesting I didn't used to believe that I used to think that was crazy I was like whatever I don't need a salvation I don't need a savior I'm fine I'm not sinful no God showed me the level of my sin when he showed me what I was doing with the tarot reading with the psychic work like those powers are not from God those powers are real but they are not from God God does not want us to do that it talks several times about it in in the Bible you can look it up. All you have to look up, look up divination. Look up Bible quotes about divination, about reading signs, about psychics, about mediums. There's a hundred of them. There's hundreds and hundreds of them. There's so many different things. So, um, I mean, just specifically right now, I've got this pulled up. It says, do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out and make yourselves unclean by them. By them. I am the Lord your God. There shall be no... There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead, for whoever does these things is an abomination of the Lord. And because of these abominations of the Lord, your God is driving them out before you. There's also this... this, this um, this emphasis on like the past, on like the ancient places, on, on Egypt, but what the what the Bible said, God like Egypt was detestable to the Lord. Like Egypt had God's people, like God's true people, enslaved. Okay? So I don't know why Satan tries to build us up like these Egyptians are some kind of like gods or whatever. I guess that's where demons really had it had a good foothold, you know, and that's where like, he tries to just inspire us to be like them. But there ain't nothing of the past that God wants us to be like except for Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, really and truly. Going back towards the past takes us back closer and closer and closer to that sin. You know, if we go through Jesus, like, we can be wiped clean of that. Like, there is not Satan, all he wants to do is defile you. He wants to take you away from Jesus. He wants to make you... I've, I've watched this video, Gods of the New Age, and I, I really recommend it on, on YouTube because it's just... It's an incredible... Once I came out, it was almost sickening and hard to watch. So it talks about, like, these um, Hindu and stuff like that. Hindu gods and stuff. And uh, it shows, like, crowds of people honoring these Hindu gods. And you can just... I could see it. I could see the serpent, like, weaving through this crowd. It shows another time. I mean... Um, also during that time they did like during these celebrations and stuff like these gods will have people defiling themselves just rubbing mud on them and dirt and blood and all kinds of nasty things and uh, lowering themselves the ashes of dead people just like Satan did to me he wanted me down in the underworld he wants us ben he wants us down on his level because he knows that if we go where God tells us to walk he can't reach us he can't reach us. So, 
Um, another thing I saw was, I do in a second, was um, them talking about this yeah, ecstatic yoga, or this ecstatic meditation and ecstatic yoga. It's basically these people just literally like, they look like they're in an orgy. Like they're not having sex with each other, but they're literally like, like just going ecstatic and crazy. And uh, they just empty their mind and they start doing all this crazy stuff. And then somebody just yells freeze and they stop. And they, everyone stands still. You know, this is probably a hundred people in a room or so. Everybody just stops and stands still. And when they do that, like, it's just opening themselves. They're literally opening themselves. Like, there was a guy standing there with his mouth wide open. What are you doing? Like, you're literally opening yourself to demons. And so, you know, I got rid of everything in my life. I got rid of all my cards. I got rid of the tarot cards, the oracle cards, the books, everything about witchcraft, everything new age, astrology. I got rid of everything. The only thing in my house right now is Bibles. Like, that's it. That's the only spiritual knowledge I need because there's so much in there that the devil wants us not to understand. There's history. There's so much goodness in there. Um, that's all you really need. I stopped doing even yoga because and meditation. Like, I'll, I'll meditate on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If I'm going to meditate, then I meditate like a prayer. But you open yourself up to so many things. You open yourself up to demons. Those angels, those angel guides, those spirit guides that you have, they're not. They're not heaven sent. They are not heaven sent. The only guide that you need is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That is it. Anything else that's coming to you, talking to you, it, it is the devil. It is the serpent himself deceiving you and lying to you. Um, I, I would highly suggest looking up anything about, um, anything, if you're questioning it, look into the Bible. Look into the Bible about what God says about divination, about reading signs and stuff like that. If you're experiencing spiritual warfare, shoot me a message if you decide to go from new age or leave this stuff out like shoot me a message i'm gonna read something real quick and uh we can all you know i'll help you in any way that i can i just wanted to share something really quick before my phone dies and i have to cut this off but there's so much information in the bible please if you need anything or anything at all just message me Songs of Deliverance is my page on Facebook where I'm sharing stuff about this, about this um, mm -hmm. lifestyle, this change, this, this testimony. Um, but this is basically what it says about people doing signs and wonders and things like that. It's not from God. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Um, I'm going to have to cut it off here. I'll do, a, I'll do another video. My phone's going to die. I just don't want it to die on me. But... Uh, just message me and I'll get back on here as well. So thank you guys.